Although the special effects in horror movies from over 30 years ago were considered poor, they presented extremely terrifying and disgusting scenes in a more direct way. The 1987 film The Kindred is one of the representative examples of this. The level of disgust is even comparable to that of The Little Mermaid, which was released at the same time. For those who want to lose weight, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on this journey. A man accidentally gets into a car accident while he is being taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Another car intentionally rear-ends them, forcing the ambulance to stop. The driver of the other car gets out without a word and violently beats up the doctor inside the ambulance, then takes away the injured man, but instead of stopping it, Tom, the ambulance driver, collected a large sum of money. It turns out that Tom, driven by the desire for money, engages in illegal activities involving buying and selling patients, taking advantage of his position. The buyer, Philip, a medical doctor, conducts inhumane genetic experiments using these patients who are not completely dead yet. One day, Tom suddenly visits Philip in the laboratory and expresses his concerns about the risks involved. Demanding more compensation, Philip seemingly agrees on the surface but secretly develops an evil. Philip intentionally tricks Tom into the basement to get the money. Naive Tom believed it, but as soon as he enters the basement, Philip locks him inside. No matter how much he calls for the door to be opened, Philip remains indifferent. Tom had no choice but to enter the basement. The eerie sounds around him make him realize the danger he's in. Little does he know that this is where Philip keeps his captive test subjects. As a woman approaches him, Tom immediately asks how to get out. In the next second, she tightly grabs his right hand with her decaying arm, sending shivers down his spine. Tom manages to free himself from her grip but is startled by a creature behind him. It turns out that the patients sold to Philip have been transformed into terrifying monsters. Tom once again pleads for help from Philip, saying he doesn't want any money anymore. However, the iron door behind him slowly opens, and Tom rushes to try and close it. Unfortunately, the monsters from inside drag him in. <laughs> Meanwhile, John, a doctor, suddenly receives a message from his wife Melissa, informing him that his comatose mother has awakened. John immediately goes to his mother's side, but she starts saying strange things. She tells John to end experiments on Blood Blue and destroy his brother Jeffrey's research report. Otherwise, something terrible will happen. John is bewildered because he knows his mother had been conducting some kind of research, but he had no knowledge of having a brother named Jeffrey. Before he can inquire about the specific details, his mother has another episode. The medical personnel can only urge John to leave quickly. In order to understand the situation, John turns to Philip since they had worked together with his mother for many years. He hopes to extract information about this brother from Philip's mouth. However, Philip is also unaware. But upon learning that John is preparing to go home to clear up the experimental data left by his mother, Philip suddenly realizes that Jeffrey must be connected to his mother's experiments and might be one of the test subjects. To make progress in his own research, Philip secretly seeks out John's mother and pressures her to hand over Jeffrey's research report. However, due to the high risk involved in the experiment, John's mother firmly refuses. However, Philip continues to press the issue and eventually drives John's mother to a heart attack and death. Afterwards, John, with tears in his eyes, organizes a funeral for his mother, unaware that Philip was responsible for her death. To fulfill his mother's last wish, John, after the funeral, immediately returns to his hometown with Melissa. However, despite their search efforts, they are unable to find Jeffrey's research report. During the night, the dog discovers something beneath the floorboards. As it barks and growls at the floor, suddenly a tentacle emerges. The dog immediately pounces, but the tentacle retracts within a second. It then emerged from the other side and as the dog ran towards it, the tentacle grabbed the dog and dragged it away. The next morning, John arrives at his mother's laboratory, only to find a stranger, a woman named Susan, sitting inside. She claims to have been his mother's former student. John didn't think much of it. She might be able to help him find Jeffrey's research paper, determined to find clues as soon as possible. John calls his colleagues from the hospital to come and assist. Meanwhile, Melissa notices that they haven't seen the dog for a while. They assume the dog must be out playing and don't pay much attention to it. However, during the night, the tentacle reappears. It burrows into a watermelon, and the woman, unaware of what's inside, takes the watermelon with her. While on the way, the tentacle emerges from the watermelon. The woman's foot accidentally touched it, startling the woman. Startling the woman. In the next second, it tightly wraps around her neck. 
Leaving her in a state of panic, the monster reveals its true form and thrusting the tentacles into the woman's five senses. The car loses control and crashes into the nearby river. The next day arrived quickly, John and his team finally made progress in their investigation. Through a cassette tape, they learned that Jeffrey was an experiment. The blood orchid blends perfectly with his genes. A new species was born, but as the tape played, a chilling and eerie sound filled the air, the recording abruptly stopped. The terrifying sound sent shivers down everyone's spines. What does this creature look like? And where has it gone now? They still had no clue. Meanwhile, Lloyd went to a nearby warehouse in search of dog. However, the dog was found dead. Just as he crouched down to examine it, he heard a noise behind him. He turned around and discovered a repulsive, sticky substance covering the stairs. As he reached out his hand to touch it, unbeknownst to him, a tentacle appeared behind him. He had just turned around when the monster strangled him in a death grip. <laughs> Moment of crisis. He spotted a sickle hanging on the wall. He swiftly grabbed the sickle and severed the monster's tentacle. Then, covering his wounded neck, he fled in a hurry. Hearing the cry for help, Susan immediately rushed out of the room. But before she could inquire about what had happened, Lloyd lost consciousness. John had no choice but to take him to the hospital. But even stranger, the doctor detected the experimental drug in Lloyd's body. In that instant, John realized that whatever attacked Lloyd was not ordinary. Little did they know. Susan was sneaking into the basement, searching for something. She accidentally entered a closet and discovered an incredibly hidden laboratory on the other side. This secret place, unknown even to John, was his mother's research base for studying Jeffrey, because right there, Susan found Jeffrey's research reports. A few jars of cute test subjects were found. Curiosity got the best of her, and she opened one of the jars. To her surprise, the experimental subject was mischievous and tried to escape. Fortunately, Susan mustered all her strength and managed to close the lid, sacrificing the tiny arm of the subject. But she didn't tell John about this incident. Instead, she took the experimental subject to Philip's laboratory. Unbeknownst to John, Susan was actually an undercover agent planted by Philip, tasked with finding Jeffrey in his research reports. Upon seeing the cute little creature, Philip was delighted. But what he truly wanted was Jeffrey, so Susan's undercover mission had to continue. In the evening, when John returned from the hospital, he informed everyone that the thing that attacked Lloyd was likely Jeffrey. He then compared his own blood with the bloodlanthropy in Lloyd's body. To their astonishment, the cellular similarities were identical. It was only then that John realized that his mother had previously extracted his own cells for research. The reason why he referred to Jeffrey as his brother was that this monster was created using his own cells. Just as he finished, lightning suddenly flashed outside and was accompanied by a terrible roar. Brad immediately rushed out of the house, intending to start the car and lead everyone away from there. Unexpectedly, the monster launched a sudden attack on the vehicle. Two tentacles lifted the entire car off the ground. Seeing this, Brad quickly jumped out of the car to save himself and hastily returned to the safety of the house. When they looked outside again, they saw that the car had been flipped over, shattering their hopes of escape. They can only keep to the house. However, at that moment, Susan suddenly aimed her gun at John. Jeffrey had revealed himself, and Susan had no intention of pretending anymore. Not only did she confess to being Philip's undercover agent, but she also declared her intent to capture Jeffrey alive, as it was the only way for her to stay alive. However, before she could finish her sentence, a tentacle burst through the window and grabbed Susan. John and Brad rushed to Susan's rescue, but the monster tightly entangled she. No matter how hard the two tried, it was to no avail. Finally, John grabbed an iron rod and decisively stabbed it into the tentacle, freeing Susan. However, to their surprise, her body suddenly turned unnaturally cold. In the midst of their confusion, Susan revealed the truth. She, too, was one of Philip's experimental subjects and her life depended on Philip's special medication. Susan's body started undergoing mutations, fish gills emerged from her abdomen, and her face displayed the same symptoms. In the horrified gaze of the others, Susan transformed into a half-human, half-fish monster, losing her own life in the process. Without much time to mourn, they had to close all doors and windows to prevent the monster from launching another attack. However, Melissa accidentally stepped on a weak spot in the floor, causing it to break and she fell through.
John quickly grabbed a rope and proceeded to rescue her. Unbeknownst to them, Melissa had fallen right into the lair of the monster, a tentacle began to stir, and the true form of the creature was revealed. As Melissa turned around, she witnessed a horrifying sight. In times of crisis John grabs the rope and comes below, he fired a shot at the monster, successfully rescuing Melissa in the nick of time, seizing the opportunity while the monster disappeared, John swiftly led Melissa to escape through a secret passage, meanwhile, Lloyd, who had awakened at the hospital, arrived at the location in his car, they regrouped, the group decided to confront the monster and put an end to it, Brad suggested using high voltage electricity to electrocute it, a plan that everyone agreed upon, however, little did they know that Philip had also arrived at the scene, as John searched for tools, Philip suddenly appeared and threatened him with a gun, demanding that he hand over Jeffrey and his research report, helpless, John had no choice but to lead him to the presence of the monster, for the first time, Philip laid eyes on the experimental subject he desired, Fear and astonishment overcame him. In the meantime, Lloyd and Brad seized the opportunity to thread a wire into a piece of meat and tossed it in front of the monster, seeing that the monster had already eaten the meat with the wires in it. Disregarding Philip's interference, immediately instructed the two to pull the circuit breaker. <laughs> with a spark accompanied by lightning, the monster emitted a mournful cry. Its entire body began to slowly dissolve, ultimately revealing a human-like form. Witnessing this scene before him, Philip, the deranged scientist, couldn't accept it. After all, his lifelong research amounted to nothing in the face of this monster. The monster satisfies Philip, dragging him with him at the last moment. But it doesn't end there. The next day, Brad ventured into the basement and was astonished to find that the monster had not died. Instead, it had split into countless smaller creatures. Furthermore, even the adorable creatures from the jars had escaped. As Melissa, who was lost in thought in the kitchen, suddenly noticed movement in the sink, she curiously investigated. Without warning, one of the adorable creatures sprang out and latched onto her face. Fortunately, John arrived just in time, exerting all his strength to remove the creature from Melissa's face and violently threw it aside. In order to eradicate these monsters once and for all, Brad gathered several gas canisters in the basement and pour a bucket of petrol on it. He used gunpowder as a fuse and light a cigarette and place it on top. Soon, the gunpowder ignited. At the very last moment before the explosion, the group managed to escape from the house. After a powerful blast, the monsters were all annihilated, and the research report was burned to ashes along with them. 